Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Glory to your holy name, Almighty God. Father God, we come before you this evening, Almighty God. And Father, we pray and ask, Father God, that you forgive us all sins, all iniquities, all trespasses, and all transgressions, O oh God. Father God, we repent in the name of Jesus, O oh God. If there's anything, Father God, we've said or done, O oh God, or something you told us to do, O oh God, but we didn't do it. Father God, we turn from that sin, O oh God, and we repent, and Father God, by your Holy Spirit, may you guide us to do what you've called us to do, and Father God, your Holy Spirit, which is our helper, O oh God, to help us to accomplish those things, O oh God. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Father God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray that you will continue to, Father God, speak, Father God, to us, O oh God, tonight, continue to teach us. Father God, let us see you. That is our desire, to see you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we pray, Father God, that you will continue to reveal yourself to us. Father God, reveal who we are, O oh God, and who we are in you, Father. And we thank you right now for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you will yet do. We ask that you cover the airways tonight, O oh God, and, be in the, and, and keep us, O oh God, and Open our ears, oh God. Silence all other voices in our heads, oh God, that we can hear, hear only your voice, oh God, the voice of your spirit, oh God. And we thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last night, we, I mean last night, last week we completed chapter 42. Um, and today we will go into chapter 43. Uh, um, quite a bit of it, it will be um, reading and being led by the spirit of Yah to minister to us uh, in that as what he's speaking by his word, amen. So we'll begin um, tonight. I'm going to use the Amplified Bible and I um, may also use um, King James or New Living Translation, but primarily Amplified, okay? Amen. So tonight we're gonna begin in chapter 43. And it it's titled The Savior of Israel, The Savior of Israel. So let's begin at verse one. And it reads, but now he who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name and you are mine. Amen. I have called you by your name and you are mine. So I want to go jump ahead to Isaiah 61 real quick. We're going to Isaiah 61 and 9 and you can write these down. 61 verse 9. And it reads, and their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants among the people. All who see them will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people who the Lord has blessed. Amen. Praise God. And I also have, um, I want to go to John. John, let's see, I think it's John. I think I had John 7. You can write that down. John chapter 7. Verse 37 through 39. John 7, 37. And it reads, Now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, and my text will read, who cleave to and trust in and rely on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow spring, springs and rivers of living water. Amen. Now back to 43. I'm sorry. Amen. But that's good anyway. Back to 43. One. Amen. Verse 2, 43, verse 2. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And though and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. 
When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. Verse three, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your savior, your savior. I give Egypt, and my text says to the Babylonians for your ransom and Ethiopia and Seba, which is a province of Ethiopia, in exchange for your release. <laughs> Amen. So <laughs> I, I kind of want to talk about this now because I just believe that the most high even yet now, because remember earlier when we read in, when we started reading Isaiah, the most high was revealing to us, yes, Babylon was a nation, but it's also a spirit and a principality that sits on that nation. And even last in the last days, the most high is going to deal with the spirit of Babylon. Amen. So it goes to, and, and, and he's telling us that that spirit is even in the yet the last days, a uh, 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 spirit that is sitting up on a nation or a nation, of course, is a group of, or a people. Okay. So the most high is going to deal with that nation. As we see, he's dealing with every nation in which the, the Hebrews, well, Judah and Israel, every time God deals with them, he punishes them for their sins. However, every nation he uses to punish Israel, Israel and Judah, he goes back and he punishes that nation. So they will understand and realize that they were used by the hand of God. He allowed it because this is his people, okay? This is his people. Um, we're gonna go, I wanna read, um, no, we're gonna continue in verse four. Chapter 43, verse four. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and because I love you, I will give men in return for you and people in exchange for your life. Now listen, <laughs> the most high speaking to us even yet right now, he's, talk, he's talking, he's speaking to us, those that belong to him. The most high speaking to us now, these are those who are in Christ. These are his people. Okay, this is a now word. So, you know, the most high, because we, I just be, you know, I, I truly, Pray to be led by the spirit of God. I don't want to say anything to God's people that he don't have me speak. But I'm going to tell you, the most high is speaking to us right now. We need to really hear with our spiritual ears. For those who have ears to hear what the spirit is speaking. It is by no mistake, Pastor Dave, I know he figured I'm going to choose Isaiah for whatever. I know he prayed about it, but God has us in Isaiah for a reason. He is revealing himself to us. He's speaking to us because these words are timely. These are timely words, and we need to hear by the Spirit what the Most High is speaking. Not what I'm speaking, but what is being spoken by the Spirit of God. Okay? And he want, uh, he's all I constantly hear, I've constantly been hearing, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Do not fear, trust the most high. No matter what we see that is about to occur or what we don't, don't fear. Do not fear, okay? Let's go into verse five. Fear not. <laughs> fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. Now this is a future word here, but yet, even yet now. Um, I, let me kind of, cause I didn't write this down, but I want to kind of, let me look at something real quick. Just bear with me for a minute cause something has fell in my spirit and um, yeah.
Give that something I want. Uh, Acts 18, and I'm just reading this because it, it was there as well. And it says in Acts chapter 18, verse 10, you can just write it down. And it says, for I'm with you and no man shall hurt you, assault you or bring you harm. For I have, he was speaking to in, 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 um, Paul at this time, but he said, um, I have many people there. That just rang in my spirit for some reason. He said, because I have people that's going to help you. And it was something, sister, even I was talking about earlier and something you shared with me. The Most High has many people who are going to help his people. Now, I know this may not ring true to your spirit right now, but God has a plan. Amen. And sister, even you might want to write that one down. That was um, even, the you know, Acts... Um, that was Acts chapter 18, verse 10. Verse 6, Isaiah 43, verse 6. It says, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Now, That's also a future word. This is a prophetic word Isaiah is speaking. This is a word for end times. And my, we're, we like, we're in it. And we these are some things we're about to see. Okay. Verse seven. Even everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, whom I have made. Bring forth the blind people who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be as, and let the people be assembled. Who among could predict this? Let them bring their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and acknowledge it. It is the truth. Verse 10, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, my servant, whom I have chosen, that you, that you may know, you may know me, believe me, and remain steadfast to me, and understand that I am he. See, <laughs> this is basically, I see that hand. Uh, I, let me get this out of my head before I, I, I forget it. <laughs> he said that. He said, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen that you may know me, know him, believe him, and remain steadfast to him and understand who he is. And we talked about this Sunday, came up Sunday in, in, um, during the, the service. We have to know who God is. See, when you know David, when we talked about David, when you know who your God is. See, when you know who he is, it would allow you to remain steadfast. You have to know who he is. Amen. I saw the hand. Uh, go, go ahead. When you, yeah, you were speaking uh, about how Isaiah is speaking prophetically and, and, and that that's true because at that time he was speaking to the uh the the people of Israel as they were coming out of Babylon, and you can see how he was speaking the word of God. He uh he was comforting them, uh concerning uh that you know he he would be with them, and uh, he was going to gather them uh, together, and also that gathering together refers to us too. It, it refers to us too. And when you uh, read further down, how um, when Isaiah was speaking to the Israelites, wanting them, and uh, I believe it was verse seven, everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him 
Yea, I have made him. Bring forth the blind people that their eyes and the deaf that their ears. Um, so basically he's saying he, he wants um, Israel to be a witness for him. He wants them to be a witness for him so the people can see the, the God that they serve and, and witnesses his power and his glory. And yes, that word is prophetic for us today because he calls us to be his witness also. Amen. Amen. And that's what he always, that was always his plan that Israel would be that witness in the earth. And even though she failed time after time, even till the end, you know, uh, when we read in Romans, even yet then, the, the scriptures tell us she, she's been broken off that the Gentiles may be grafted in. But Paul says, how greater even, uh, how greater is it when she's, uh, when she repents and even comes back in and she's regrafted. So don't think she's been cast away because she has not. She has not been cast away. So that promise remains. It has not gone away. You know, we've been taught, we've been um, mistaught that that um, word is not a word for those people. You know, they're gone away, that's done with and, and, and they've been replaced. No, that's not true. According to the scriptures, that's not true. There's a promise that remains to the end. Amen. Amen. So we're going to pick it back up at verse 10. Unless anyone else had a comment or a question. Verse 10. It says, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know me, believe me, and remain steadfast to me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. So the most high through Isaiah is reiterating this whole, this whole thing to them. He said, hey, I am God. There is no other God. There's none before me and there'll be none after. He said, you keep falling and failing. You want to, you fall and want to uh, do what these other nations are doing, they're praying to woods and so wood, stone, sticks, and, and this is what they're doing. And you're doing this. You're doing these same things. But God is reiterating to them by in and through Isaiah, I am God. I am God alone. And there's none other but me. And he's speaking this very thing yet to us today. He himself, he's God alone, all by himself. Amen. Verse 12, he says, I've declared, and my text says the future, and have saved, and have saved, and I have shown that I am God. That's my text says this. When there was no strange and alien God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. We are his witnesses. We are his witnesses. <laughs> we are his witnesses. Praise Yah. Is there anyone else would like to comment on this? We are his witnesses. Um, gosh, and, and I really don't want to speak on this yet because um, I, 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 I've really been talking to God about this Every time I keep hearing this about the witnesses, the witnesses, witness, and it talks about the two witnesses in the last days. And everybody wonders who the two witnesses are. Now, I, I don't want to go deeper into this, but because I'm still praying and talking to God to reveal this to me. Everybody says the witness, the two witnesses in the last days are this, and the two witnesses in the last days are that. But I keep hearing this, you know, the most high keeps telling us who the witnesses are. But I don't want to go into that any further. So we're going to stop there. Amen. <laughs> now we got to remember now, also there's two nations. I, was, I see my sister in the back. She raised her hand. What'd she say? Yes. Turn her on. Who are the witnesses? I'm sorry. Who are they? Who are the witnesses? I don't, well, I don't want to say yet. <laughs> I don't want to say yet, what? but what I'm saying here, when the most high keeps saying, you are my witnesses, 
Who is he talking to? He's talking to Judah and he's talking to Israel. Okay. The two nations. Might as well go there then. I mean. Well, I don't know you got it. <laughs> Listen, I'm I know. Saying, but I'm just saying, while I was reading this, and you know, every time I keep seeing witnesses, it kept coming back to me of that scripture that says my two witnesses that's in the book of uh, Revelations, where he says my two witnesses he said they're going to be in the last days and they're going to prophesy. And everybody keeps trying to figure out who the two witnesses are. They keep saying, it, oh, maybe it's Moses, maybe it's Elijah. maybe." But I'm like, well, the most high keep calling Israel and he's calling Judah witnesses. He said they're the two witnesses. Oh, hallelujah. I feel my spirit. Hallelujah, Lord. So I'm just saying, let's just study it out, guys. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it, it just it, it just got my attention. Okay, this is the only place now. Uh, this is the only place I would see. I'm seeing this where he's actually saying, "You are my witnesses." Okay, and everybody keeps trying to figure out well, who are the witnesses. Okay, maybe I'm just saying. Okay, so let's move on. Let's study it out together. Let's pray about it and talk to God about this. Because only the most high can reveal it to us. Everybody's trying to figure it out. But only the most high by his spirit can tell us. That's the only way we're going to know. But I just know this is what he's saying. He says, you are my witnesses. And who? And the two witnesses, what are they going to prophesy? They're going to prophesy the most high. They're going to prophesy the word in the last days. But what's the, but what does the scripture say? Most high going to give them power. Okay. Uh, let's go to 11. It says, I even I am the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. I have declared the future and have saved the nation in the times of danger. And that's what my text reads. Remember, I'm reading Amplified. And it says, I've shown that I am God. When there was no strange and alien God among you, therefore you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Verse 13. Yes, from the time of the first existence of day, and from this day forth, I am he. And there is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who can hinder or reverse it? Verse 14. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake, I have sent one to Babylon and will bring down all of them as fugitives, all their nobles, even the Chaldeans, into the ships over which they rejoice. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Verse 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth chariot and horse, army and mighty warrior. They, lay, they lie down together they cannot rise. They are extinguished and they are, they are quenched like a lamp wick. Verse 18, do not remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I even, it says, I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. <laughs> Verse um, 20, the beasts of the field honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. The people I formed for myself that they may set forth my praise. 
And my text says, and they shall do it. 22, yet you have not called upon me, O Jacob, but you've been weary of me, O Israel. And it made me think of that the, the, what we read to Isaiah earlier. Remember when um, <laughs> Isaiah was prophesying and they said, you keep on telling us the same thing over again, over and over and over again. And we're tired. We're tired of hearing it. We're tired of hearing it. You talking to us like we're stupid. And I'm paraphrasing. Line up online. Priest up and we're like, we don't know. Like we don't understand. You just keep repeating this thing over and over again. So this one just made me think of the most. I said, you weary of me. You're tired of me. You're tired of hearing me. Verse 22, um, verse 23. And it says, yet you've not brought me your sheep and goat for burnt offering or honored me with your sacrifices. I've not required you to serve with an offering or treated you as a slave by demanding tribute or weary, wearied you with offering incense. 24, you've not bought me sweet cane with money or satiated, I, I, or satiated, satiated me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you've only burned me with your sins. <laughs> you've wearied me with your iniquity. I, I, even I, am he who blocks out and cancels your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins, but put me in remembrance. Let us plead and argue together. Set forth your case that you may be justified. Your first father sin and your teachers, the priests and the prophets, your mediators transgress me. When he says your first father, he's speaking reference in Jacob. Okay. Verse 28. And so I will profane the chief ones of the sanctuary and will deliver Jacob to the curse. And I will subject Israel to reproaches and reviling. So because of this, and he says, he, Isaiah's prophesied even as future, because we already know they've already gone down and been delivered from Babylon. He was talking, they're going to be delivered from Babylon. But he was even saying that God, most, he, he's saying here that, um, it, let me read it again. He says, and so I will profane the chief ones of the sanctuary and will deliver Jacob to the curse. and Israel to reproaches and reviling. See, these things are like perpetual signs that are going to follow the most high people. Those that are not in Christ. Okay? Even yet to today. But I want to read, um, I had here, I think it was, let me see, Lamentations. And you can just write this down. Lamentations 2. And I want to read, um, starting at verse two. And it reads, the Lord has swallowed up all the country places and inhabit and habitations of Jacob and is spared not nor pitied. He's demolished his wrath in his wrath, the strongholds of the daughter of Judah, and he's cast down to the ground, the kingdom and its rulers, polluting them and depriving them of their sanctity. He's broken off in his fierce anger, every horn or means of defense of Israel. And he's drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and has burned amidst Jacob like a flaming fire consuming all around. He has been his bow like an enemy and has stood with his right hand set like a foe and has slain all the delights and pride of the eye on and in the tent of the daughter of Zion. He's poured out his wrath like a fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He's destroyed Israel and has destroyed all its palaces, has laid in ruins its strongholds and has multiplied in the daughter of Judah, groaning and moaning and lamentation. And he has violently broken down his temple like a booth or a hedge of a garden. And he has destroyed the place of his appointed assembly. The Lord has caused a solemn appointed feast and Sabbath 
to be forgotten in Zion and is spurned and rejected in the indignation of the anger of his anger, the king and the priest. So the most high has brought his judgment against the people. And he does this. We see every time they sin, God, he punishes them. He punishes them for their sin. He deliver, you know, and he uses a nation to do that. And then he delivers them, but then he goes back and he punishes the nation that he used to, to punish them. Do we see this? Can, can we see this? Have we seen this thus far? This is what the most high does. And this is what he's going to do again. <laughs> Amen. This is what he's going to do again. Does anybody have any questions before we actually go into our questions or any comments? Questions or go ahead. Uh, yeah, my, my question is about the uh the prophecy. Is is some of that uh what Isaiah is um uh, telling the people some of that some of that is future as far as okay. they're uh going into captivity and, and falling into sin. That's that is, uh, yeah. you're absolutely right. We still see it even till yet today. Our own... yes, it's future. <laughs> so you would think that with the prophet telling the Telling the people that uh, Israel that that they would take heed and and maybe uh, try to go in a different way, but you know, I'm just yeah, saying. And you're absolutely right. Even until the end, until the actual annihilation of the temple by the Romans, okay? Because that was the last dispersion after Jesus had come, and then years later the Romans actually came in because we actually read the, the Israelites weren't even sitting on the throne even during that time. Now, because when we read about Herod, Herod was an Edomite. He wasn't, he was neither Judah or Israel. So we see even then they were not even in positions of, of uh, ruling themselves even at that time. But even when we read later, when we read other texts, like when you read Josephus and you read um, later on, you go in and you read where the Romans actually went in and destroyed Israel. They actually wiped it out, annihilated it. So the, they fled. They fled into other nations, primarily into Africa, where they always fled, where they felt they would blend, where they won't be found. The very place where Mary and Joseph went to hide Jesus. Okay, they fled where they always go. They went into. They most of them went into Africa. Okay, those that weren't all that did not during some of those dispersions stay within some of those other nations and mingle. Okay, so yes, indeed, this is future. This is it was it was a future word as well. If we read in Deut when we read earlier on um, in the beginning when we read Deuteronomy twenty eight, the most said the most high said in, in Deuteronomy twenty eight, these would be for a sign. You're gonna know the people if we just read the Bible. He said, because these things are going to follow them as a sign. And I keep bringing this up by Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, listen here, we're going to captivity so much. We're going into slavery so much. Was this why, were we born to be uh, uh, slaves? Is this father, you know, he talking to the most high. Is this what, why you created us? Because they constantly sin. But this was the fun, but most high sent them into captivity. In all our getting, let us, you know, I'm praying for the most high to give us understanding that he opened our eyes and that we see. Amen. Hallelujah. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> Hallelujah. I had a comment, Sister Sylvia. Huh? I had a comment, actually. Okay. A word of encouragement. I got to figure out how to say this. And it's really what uh, the Holy Spirit told me. Um, a little while back when I was minister, I said something about the Holy Spirit said that we're Christians. One of the problems we have with speed readers. And I think yeah. what the Holy Spirit is saying to me was when I said that was when we have read the word in the past, a lot, most time we read the word if we're reading the word talking about other people. Yeah. But if you look at even what we read tonight and we're reading the word, you read the word to ourselves. It's a word talking about us to us. And you would be, and it's only through the Holy Spirit. I'm glad you said that because the Holy Spirit then will show you, you know, the things 
the examples of things in the past and he's in warnings, but he also bring that in today's time and give us what's happening now and what's to come concerning us as a people. But I think what helps me is like when you read tonight, I put myself in that, that I have to remember who God is. I have to be faithful to him. I have to do what he's telling me to do right now. And if I don't do that, he's chosen us. So I put myself in there. He's chosen me to show, to be an example that he proven himself to me, you know, and now we are to go and teach others that he is God based on what he's done in our personal lives. So when you make the word personal to me, I'm, and I may just talk to myself, he brings that word to me and makes it more personal. And then he explained, he give you a revelation of where you fit in there, how we fit in there right now. We are who he's talking about. And to and I may be talking just to myself, but then I bring it in today's time and it brings, the Holy Spirit brings clarity of even what's going on today and how we shouldn't fear about what's going on and even what's to come. I see a lot of Christians now, they're kind of, and I guess we, what they're talking about too, people talking about, well, we're going to be third, we're going to be a World War Three, and all this kind of stuff. And all that stuff may be true, but that's not our testimony right now. Our testimony should be about the kingdom. You know, we yes. didn't get caught up in that stuff, you know, and it's easy as a Christian to, you know, even though we do have faith in God, you said faith was to trust and rely on, you know, and that's who we should be you know, witnessing to, do we going to fall in that other portion up there that we're not going to believe in him and we're not going to be, a, we're going to be a part of that reproach that he's talking about in Israel because we're not where we're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. You know, <clears throat> it's amazing. And, 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 and Pat, and you said speed readers. I think that's what you said in the beginning. You said we were speed readers. And not only that, uh, you're right. We were speed readers. We, and then we pick out the stuff we want that mm -hmm. sound good to us. We, 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 we had gotten to a point because, and it was how we were taught. We didn't read everything in context. We pulled out verses. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, and, and, then, and, and then without having the whole, the whole context. reading everything in context, we, we don't even get the right understanding. And yeah. I want to use an example, not even just of that. So I, I have this real old Bible. It's like from the 1800s, okay? And it has, it, it has, a, um, it's got the King James authorized, the King James revised. The first time they made it a, a, a different Bible, okay? They, they were kind of a little bit changing words, you know, changing the meaning in some words. And then they had, and it has the Apocrypha in it. But, I was reading the Lord's Prayer. And this is why it's so important to go back even to the King James. And if we can't all get one, make sure we have one, the authorized King James version. Because like I was reading, and then I mean in every other, every Bible I put down, when you read the Lord's Prayer, it says, Our Father who art, it says, Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom done, thy will be done on earth, on earth. And but when you go to the authorized King James Version, it's not on, it's in, ver in the earth, in the earth. You see how that one word changes the whole meaning? Because when you want to, man, I'm messing folks up here. Y'all gonna be, everybody gonna be okay though. Hallelujah, Jesus' name. When you want to, um, on, on earth, why would you say on? And I was talking to God, I'm like, why do you say, why do you change it to on earth instead of in the earth? Because if we're on the globe, you're on the earth. But if you're on the, in the, in, inside a firmament and a, a flatter earth, you're in the earth. See, the one word, can change the whole meaning of the of everything. Almost every Bible I read, except the authorized King James Version, said in the earth. And that was one of the reasons I stopped reading the NIV, because the NIV left a lot of scripture out. You'd read a lot of markets missing. So that's why it's really important that 
I don't know. We we actually get the King James Bible. And even though these right here do help because they make it plain because it's more how we speak today, we still have to really kind of compare the word and make sure it's not changing the meaning. And it's sad that we have to go through all that because it don't even make no sense. The devil is a lie. You sit up there 15 hours trying to look, falling asleep trying to study in case. It don't make no sense. But that's, you know what? But that's okay. God is good. <laughs> Amen. And even by his spirit, he reveals the truth to us. And even though we do, like you said, we in the past, we've sped, we speed read. The most high, when he, he's still by his spirit, he reveals his word to us and he gives us understanding. Because even some things like I have read years ago, I can go back and read it now, man, and I promise you, it's something I'm going to see different because it's the Holy Spirit that brings a revelation. Amen. All right, you guys, let's go to the questions um, 43. 43, the first question was, what did God promise to do for Israel following her judgment? And we find this in 43 verses 1 through 7. We can find that answer. Okay, I don't hear anybody. I see some, I see people. Somebody raise a hand because I, <laughs> I know some of you guys I can't see. Well, one thing he <laughs> promised to redeem them. Yes. Uh, that, that he would um, redeem them. And because, and also it talks about that, which means bring them to freedom. And he's because he's called them by name. And he said that he would deliver them no matter what difficulty they go through. He would be there. He would bring them out of that. And um, and then he would also gather them, uh, gather us, them and our, our, us and our children for all the four corners of the earth. Hallelujah. Now, so now let's understand that this is a la the last day word. How do we know this is a last day prophetic word? Because they were in Babylon. They, they knew where they were. They were scattered to the four, the four corners of the earth at that time. They were in a they, and were in a centrally located place. So we know where they were. So this is a last day prophetic word that is an end time word where everywhere they've been scattered to the four corners of the earth. This is what Most High said they are in the four corners of the earth. He said they will be gathered. This is what he's going to do. Sister Eva. I just want, and you said it the last time uh, when you first started. He also said, fear not. And Pastor Dave said the rest of it. Amen. That's correct. That is correct. Amen. He, he's going to redeem. He's going to redeem and gather her from the nations where she has been scattered. Praise y'all. Question number two. It said, what challenge to the nations is once against, it says, what challenge to the nation is one or uh, once again extended? What challenge to the nations is once That was number again. two. Once again. That's actually what it's spelled. It should once. be once again has been okay. extended, not against. Okay. What challenge to the nations is once again extended? He wanted to bring forth. Bring and that was uh, in verses 8 through 9. To prove him wrong. Sister Catherine. To prove him wrong. I'm sorry. I, I'll say it again. To prove him wrong. Oh, yes. Absolutely. He said, he, he said, sit down. He said, converse with me. He said, prove me wrong if you can. Okay. Tell me what is to come. He said, if you can, if you are a God, reveal to me what the future. Prove me wrong what I've said. <laughs> Tell me what is going to happen in the future if you can. Ooh. Amen. He said, go ahead, bring, bring your witnesses, bring in all you. He said, I'm, I'm going to give you opportunity to bring some backup. Come on and you reveal to me what is going to happen in the future. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Question number three, 
who were God's witnesses of his ability to deliver what he has declared? Israel. You already gave the answer. Yeah, I gave the answer, but it was Israel. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He called them his witnesses. Yep. Amen. So we done. done. Amen. Because we're supposed to know who God is. Yeah. He's our God. We're supposed to know him. Yeah. Amen. There's no, we're supposed to be, we stand before the, ju the jury, uh, you know, in the trials, like, you can't tell me God, our God is not God. That's how, that's who we're supposed to be. Sister Eva, I see your hand up. Your mic is off. I wanted to just say, uh, it's just something that, that hangs in with me. The mission has not changed. That's absolutely right. Well said, the mission has not changed. Mm. The mission has not changed. I like that. The mission has not changed. <laughs> Question number four, it says, what did God promise regarding Babylon? What was his promise as it regarded Babylon? And that we found that in verses 14 and between verses 14 and 17. To Babylon. Go ahead. He judged, yeah. he judged them for what they did to uh, Judah. That's correct. He's going to make their people fugitives and destroy their army. Yep. Yeah. He judgment was not. Lay down and not raise up. Say that again, um, Elder Barnes. I was just, I wrote down, um, they would lay down and not rise, given. What's this given? Can't read your writing. <laughs> he would extinguish them. Yep. And destroy them. That's correct. Wrote down. That's, that, that's all correct. Well, that is correct. And um, question number five was while Israel had been unfaithful, what did God promise? And this is always blows my mind. Even though Israel had been unfaithful, what did God promise? He would sweep away their transgressions. Amen. Amen. He will blot out their transgressions, though their sins will bring reproach upon them. Hmm? Say again, Sister Catherine. I just said I got verse 25. Okay. So so what does it say? Uh, I even I am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake. For, for who I say? will not remember your sins. Amen. God said he's going to do it for his sake because his word is not going to return to him void. Amen. For his sake, for his glory, hallelujah, that he's not going to give to anybody else. Amen. So we've just completed uh, 43. And forty four is a long chapter. It is at the, this time. It is. Well, I'll go to a little bit. I'll read some through. I'll go through some of it, and I'll read through it. And of course, we'll cover it again next week, just so we can keep everything on track. So, chapter forty four, verse one reads. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant in Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord, who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you, fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Yerushalayim, the upright one. It's, and that means the upright one, and it's applied to Israel as a type of... Um, I don't like what it said right here. I read it somewhere else, but it it it, it was a, a, a term of endearment. Okay, that that's better to describe it as a term of endearment to Israel, 
whom I have chosen. Verse three, for I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. So I want to go to Isaiah 61, verse nine. I think it is. Yeah. And it reads, and their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants among the people. All who see them will recognize and acknowledge that they are the people whom the Lord has blessed. Amen. Isaiah, let me see, something we read and also references back to Isaiah chapter 228. 228. Well, that's wrong. Whatever. No, I wrote that down wrong because it's not even 28 verses in Isaiah. I'll have to go back to that one. John chapter 7. John 7. I had John chapter 7, verse starting at verse 37. And it reads, now on the final, the most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, if any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, that's my text, okay? As the scripture has said, from, from his innermost being shall flow springs and rivers of living water, Okay? So that references us back here to what we just read in Isaiah in the first chapter of 44. Verse three, where it says, for I will pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the ground and I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. And they shall spring up among the grass like willows or poplars by the water course. Verse, what time is it? I don't want to go over my time. Verse five. One will say, I am the Lord's, and another will call himself by the name of Jacob. And another will write on, the, on his hands that I am the Lord's and surname himself by the name of Israel. Verse six, thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, I am the last, and besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let him stand and proclaim it, declare it, and set in order before me, since I made and established the people of antiquity. Then let them declare yet future things. And here the Most High is saying again, if you are real God, then tell us the future. Tell us what's about to happen. Because the Most High, the scriptures tell us, he's already told us the end at the beginning. And no one can do that but him. Amen. Verse eight, fear not, nor be afraid. Here the Most High tells us again through Isaiah. Fear not. Don't be afraid. And my text says here, in the violent coming upheavals. Have I not told it to you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses here. He, again, he's calling us witnesses. He's calling his people witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no other rock I know, not any. <laughs> no other rock. I know not none. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, go ahead, Sister Pat, Sister Elder Barn. So, Sylvia, I was just thinking how, <laughs> um, just relating it to us today, how how we are, are God's chosen people, how God wants to use us for his glory and how 
everything that's going on now in this nation and around the world with the wars and different things, Russia, Ukraine, and in the Middle East, nobody is calling on the most high for help. <laughs> I haven't seen nobody. Um, well, I know the world's not going to do it. Even, even some of the believers um, just need to, we just all need to call on the Lord to help us, you know, in the world and what's going on in our lives and stuff. Not, not that we, um, we're not calling out in fear, but just out of concern for innocent life, people losing their lives and livelihood and all what's going on. But there's no relationship. Amen. Yeah. We, no relationship. We're ones supposed to be doing it. Yeah. 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 We're yeah. witnesses. Yeah. We're yeah. the ones who are supposed to be doing it. Yeah. yeah. The people of God. Yeah. Yes. Those in Christ. We're the ones supposed to be doing it. Amen. So we're going to find in the end that it's a lot of those who saying, Lord, Lord, but, yeah. that, and I'm getting even more understanding of that. You know, it's a lot of people who say they belong to the most high, but they don't. And we're going to see that. Amen. We're already seeing it. Yes, we are. Amen. We're already seeing that. Amen. Go ahead, man. Okay. Wow. Because it's a lot of people who are really calling on the Lord and say that they belong to God and they love you. But all the thing they want to do is fly up out of here, even though they still hate people. Yeah. They want to fly up out of here and think there's not going to be a recompense. Yep. Okay, I'm just, it, there is going, and it's already started. I'm going to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus. It's already started. Yep. There's going to be a recompense. Yep. Amen. Okay, the 400 years of our captivity is over. There's nothing new under the sun. What has be will be again. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to get my backpack ready so we can be ready to go. I'm going to be on the ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be listen here. I'm gonna be on the ready. Everybody need to have a backpack and have it on a, 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 a get get ready and go back. I'm just Thank saying. I, okay, hallelujah. Whether Thank I be here or not, whether but I'm gonna be on the ready. I, I I believe God's word. God said it's gonna be. A, he said the second. The second gathering is going to be greater than the first one, than the last one. He, he said, no longer are they going to say the God who delivered the, us out of Egypt. Because the next one going to be greater. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. I heard somebody say my name. Yeah, was, Sister Sue. Yes, sir. Uh, my, my question is, uh, I, 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 I think I got an answer, but I'm going to ask the question and see how it falls. Yes, sir. <laughs> In in chapter the chapter we're reading now, he called the Israelites the chosen, right? Yes. But the previous one in verse six and seven, he said those were called uh, from the north, south, east, and west. That those those are called. So is there a difference in called and chosen? No, he's calling his chosen from the north, east, and the west. It. I will see to the north of yourself. Okay, let me go back. Say the verses so we can just go to them. I like this. So, uh, it, 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 what verses, verses are you referencing? 43 is verse 6. 43 and 6. It's 6 and 7. Okay, yes. let me read it. And it says, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back, bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Even everyone who is called by my name. See, this is another thing we need to study out. What the most high mean by this in the scripture when he said those that are called by my name. Everybody want to say this is Christians and no, it's not. No, it's not because they're not. They have, that no, that's right. Now, even okay, hallelujah. The Israelites all had God's name attached to their name. They all did. Elisha. When we know what the name of God, what God's name is, when he said his people who were called by his name because they bore his name. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm going to say this, and everybody's going to be all right in the name of Jesus. When you go and you look and you actually pull up 
the transatlantic slave trades, and you look at the name of some of those was on that was on some of them, look at their names. That's why they had to change their names. Elijah, Jeremiah, Micah. That's why their names were changed. And even though I don't know about this book, Roots, and how real or whatever it is, but that was why they were beating the daylights out of him and making him, they were changing the name. No, your name going to be different. Sarah, when you really look up those names, they bore the, they had God's name attached to their names. Okay, I'm sorry. Now we kind of got off a little bit. Now it says, those who are called by that, my name, who I have created for my glory. He only had one people he created for his glory. The Israelites, yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. It says, whom I have made. God has, he had a people that he had chosen for himself. Hey, bring forth the blind people. Now, what was the other verse you said? Nine. Then you go back to the uh, next chapter. The next chapter in uh, chapter, chap, uh, verse 44. one. Forty-four. Yes, in forty-four, verse one. Forty-four, one. Yes. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. These his people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. There. Uh, yes. So you saying that there is no different than those that are called and those that are chosen. Not right here, because he's speaking specifically to his people that's been scattered to the four corners of the earth in the in the in the, in, the, in slavery. He said they are scattered to the four corners of the earth. History even tells us this. History lines up with the scripture. I'll, I'll uh, look it up. Okay, that's okay. I, I will be yeah, I'll be looking it up in the Hebrew uh, book and uh, see exactly uh, is there a difference between those two. Yeah. Oh, you mean in the concordance? You, you're yeah. talking about what it is? Yes, yes. Okay, amen. Yeah. But yeah, right here, this is clearly said. He's talking, because right now Isaiah I mean, is talking to the Israelites. He's talking yeah. to his people. Yeah, Amen. Is, old Jacob, my servant, and thou Jerusalem, which I have chosen, probably Jerusalem, but uh, whom I have chosen. So yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to get a, a distinction between. Oh, I understand. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Called, yes, those that are called and those that are chosen. But was it a specific reason why? I know uh, because you think about what we read in the New Testament in the call. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I got you. But here he's referencing here. These are right now. He's talking to Israel and Judah. Because I'm going to tell you, I never realized they were called witnesses until I started really reading this. Well, they had to be the witnesses because those were the ones who had the law and was and was what supposed to be our tutors. So they were witnesses from the beginning. Absolutely. But then it clicked, but I never, but see, this made me think about what we read in Revelations, the two yeah. witnesses, the yeah. lampstands, mm -hmm. the two candlesticks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Two olive trees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zachariah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, you kind of, okay. Well, we're four after the hour. And, and, and Elder Jones, when you really go in and you do some more research on that, I know you will. And if you, Please share it with us if uh, you, you like next week. If okay. it be God's will. Amen. Amen. Amen for everybody. But well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close in prayer unless anyone has any last comment or question. <sighs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to you Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. What is life to us? It is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet, Almighty God. You show us how to go, where to go. Father God, you lead us by your word. Continue, Father, we pray to lead us and guide us on the path of righteousness for your name's sake, O oh God. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, for revelation. We thank you for knowledge, but above all, we thank you for understanding. Continue to minister to our spirits, Almighty God. 
Give us understanding of your word, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, continue to speak to us, Father God, even as we depart from this, um, this class tonight, O oh God. Continue to teach us and speak to us by your word, O oh God, and by your spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Father God, that you continue to cover and keep every family, every person here tonight and their families, O oh God. We ask Almighty God that you continue to keep every member and household of Kingdom Covenant Ministries. Father God, we pray and ask that you continue to cap your angels round about us, protecting us and keeping us, lifting us up. At least we should even dash our feet against a stone, Almighty God, according to your word, O oh God. We ask, Father God, that you continue to keep us from the noisome pestilence and the disease, that you won't allow it to come nigh us, nor the places we dwell, Father God, according to your word, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Father God, that, Father God, that you just continue to lead us and guide us, Almighty God. Have your way in us. May we be your witnesses, O oh God, in this earth in these last days, O oh God. May we stand strong in you in the power of your might, O oh God. And we thank you right now, Father God, for what you're doing, what you're going to do, Father God, and what you've already done. We thank you in Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah's name we pray. Amen.